Well, the question for you, as always, is how do you take an average idea and make it an extraordinary idea? How do you make the leap? That's what Brink Thinking is all about. Good morning. It's Malcolm all out here. Welcome to the show. And uh, we're going to talk about leadership. You know, leadership is, is one of these areas that we're all questioning these days, both in our political lives and our, our private lives, and, and it's badly, badly needed. Who better to talk about it than uh, Mayor Pam Iorio, uh, uh, two-term mayor of Tampa? Hello, Malcolm. Hello, Pam. It's great How are you? to be on your show. Finally, huh? Yeah. Good to have you here. Yeah. So, um, you left office, uh, which you know, when I went to your farewell gathering, I was like stunned when I seen. I mean, like with an 87 percent approval rate. I mean, I, listen, I knew you were well liked, but 87 percent. How does one serve two terms in public office and leave with an 87 percent approval rating? I don't know, but the public's been good to me, and um, I really have had such a positive experience in public life starting as a county commissioner and then as supervisor of elections and then as mayor. There's a lot of negativity in politics today, but I have to say I've never experienced it personally. I've always had just a very positive uh, time of it and I think that accounts for part of it. You've been able to me from what I've seen from a distance here is uh, to stay just uh, far from that. I mean mm -hmm. you've stayed just a enough away I mean, but it's hard. I mean you look at the, the, the leadership today and, and, and what's so badly needed. So as you've made the leap now yourself from public to private life okay and so excited to see the book and I'm sure many of you heard about it straightforward again ways to live and lead. Uh, I'm always talking Pam about our leadership in this country, how do we get more people in the private sector to serve in public office and, and, and vice versa? I mean, so we're not just all staying in the same place, which I think is a problem. Um, what advice do you have for our, uh, let's start there maybe with uh, business folks, encouraging them possibly to serve in, in public life? One of the messages that I deliver now is that the leadership is within most people. I mean, most people have tremendous leadership abilities, but you have to work on it and develop that leadership. All of us are a work in progress. I mean, even in my last months as mayor, I was thinking of ways that I could improve. You know, I would think, well, I didn't do so well at that. I need to do a better job, even though I knew that my time was coming to an end as mayor, because you have to recognize that you are a work in progress, and you have to work on those leadership qualities. It's a sign of a good leader, man. I mean, never settling, right? You can't settle. Yeah. And, and yeah. when I meet someone who says, this is what I am I have no further room to improve or grow that person is really not a leader so what I would say first to people out there who wonder if perhaps they could serve in a political capacity one day is of course you can recognize the leadership that you have within yourself work and develop it and put yourself out there in a leadership position but it's like when people say they're not creative yeah. we all are problem solvers right we all really we are to some degree right creative another thing to work on right I mean right. you know people really is, yeah. people are on different ends of the spectrum with creativity but absolutely you can work on it and absolutely. become more creative well let's just a form of problem solving I see yeah one of the more interesting statements I came across on your website by the way which I like very much it's 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 uh, it's well said it's it's, it's done well um, is how you uh, is uh, how you've transformed bureaucracy advanced on popular change and successfully navigated through tough financial times to me those are three huge objectives no small order indeed of course um, these are not only important metrics for government Pam but for companies out there obviously our leaders, our business executives, okay? How can executives transform their companies when we're in such a critical economic time right now? You know, all companies need to change and grow. And any, you know, no company and no government that remains stagnant is going to be prosperous. Um, and now I work with companies all the time as a leadership speaker, and so I see that the best companies are ones that are trying to empower employees at all different levels. You know, the old top-down, what we saw when we were, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, kind of that top-down mentality where the boss tells you the way it's going to be and then you just implement. That's changed. Right. It's now about empowering employees at every level so that they can think of solutions and they can think of ways to implement. To me, those are the best companies today in America. Well, cut them loose. I mean, which is a lesson for everybody. Let's cut them loose. Let You know, uh, uh, earlier today, uh, and I'll mention it because I, I think it's worth mentioning, sat down uh, with uh, in, in, you know David Pizzo, of course, so, yes. uh, the head of Blue Cross Blue Shield, dynamic uh, man. Yes, he is. And talked about the new feeling and sense at, again, a popular brand, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and that what they're doing 
doing is, is to, they want to encourage their employees to imagine. They want to build that imagination. So it, really it is about building that imagination and I think getting people, what I call in my world, brink thinking. Getting you know people to the brink. Getting them to um, not settle for average, Pam. Well, you, you know? know, when Tampa decreased its crime rate so dramatically, right. of course I had two great police chiefs, uh, Castor and Hogue, but the real key to it, and they would say it if they were here, was that the, the police officer on the street came up with ideas on how to reduce crime within their sector. That's it. It came from their leadership. They exerted leadership, and it showed in the results. And that's how companies thrive when they empower employees at different levels. Right. And, and we, that's the key right there. So we've got to encourage uh, our teams and our employees. Again, we've got to uh, help them to imagine again, don't we? Well, we do. And people have to believe in themselves. It's easy right. in this world to stop believing in yourself. It can be kind of stressful out well, there. Well, when you have the problems. And there the, are many, yeah. many problems, many issues. Yeah. Many people carry with them family right. problems and personal problems and so forth. So it's easy to lose faith in yourself but I think when people believe in themselves and their capacities that's when they shine that's when they really live the most meaningful life I always say in my talks when you learn to lead yourself well then you can lead others and right. you will have a successful life. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, well said. I mean, you, you can't very well uh, lead others if you don't have your own program together. I call it having your house in order. I mean, you've got right. to have your house in order. It's the same thing with a brand. I mean, you're a personal brand. You have company brands. We're all our own brands That's within right. ourselves. And, uh, and it's those principles you shape yourself with that I, I encourage people all the time to, to uh, do exactly. What is straightforward leadership? Straightforward leadership is, is practical, pragmatic, respectful, kind, consensus building, open to compromise, not ideological. It's really what we need in this country today. We've gotten uh, very far afield from what I think the beginning of our country was all about because our country was really founded on compromise. When you look at the Constitutional Convention of 1787, it was a textbook example of compromise mm -hmm. and compromise on not tiny issues like corporate tax rates. I'm talking about compromise on a moral issue like slavery. Right. And yet the best minds of the country were able to come to an agreement because the greater good was more important to them than their individual interests. And straightforward leadership is about that. It's about the greater good being more important than your individual interests, treating each other with respect, disagreeing with respect, Amen. kindness right. and honesty and directness. It's what we call teamwork. It's, it's the best of teamwork and we're losing it in our mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. not just in politics, but uh, you can see examples. Look at the Wall Street mess of, the, of 08 and so forth. That's not straightforward leadership either. And we need it we need an infusion of it in business and in politics and in the nonprofit world. Right. So people out there that are running their business, they see the economic crisis. They see, as you say, the Wall Street debacle. What happened with big business there? What took place? Okay, uh, sort of. I call it stagnant mindsets. People have sort of uh, hunkered down. Uh, I guess the question I have is, how do we drive change right now uh, when it seems that everyone is hunkering down? How do we get people? Because a lot of people right now, change is not the order of the day for them. They're sort of just staying still. But we're not staying still. This society and this culture is moving at such a rapid rate of speed that, you know, the electronic device you hold in your hand today is not what you'll own a year from now. The, the ch rate of speed is astonishing today. And that's unsettling to a lot of people because change is unsettling it to is. us as human beings. It we is. try, we actually like to have everything the same. Most people do. They like to drive the same way to work. They like to have the same thing at lunch. They go to the same restaurants. They meet the same people. Anything that disturbs that pattern sends them off. And yet change is a natural course of life. From the time that your child is born, you want it's nothing but change, yeah, right? You, and it. it's, it's a natural. So um, I actually, though, Malcolm, I'll share with you that while, yes, there's anxiety about our economy and so forth, I am on a daily basis interacting with business people who are growing their businesses, 
embracing change, doing neat and innovative things. I think that the American entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. Well, actually, the times when things are tough is actually a good time to expand. I uh, see history it. has proven that. I see it. Yeah. And in particularly yeah. where I see it are those companies under 20 million yeah. in revenue. Small business. Really? It's the growing. heartbeat of the country. We, we hire 65% of the employees in this country. It is small business. It's the, it's the, it's the, uh, the heartbeat of the country, really. Uh, and that's the, the force we've got to get uh, growing again and being confident in their minds, expanding their horizons. And, and I do see, Pam, some of that is coming forward. There's a lot of uncertainty, obviously, in an election year and with, you know, things uh, politically, naturally, but business-wise, it has to go on. You very know, clearly. I really do think that we put too much stock, though, in the election year. When you look at the period mm -hmm. after the Civil War to 1900, the period of the Industrial Revolution, we had a string of presidents that most people couldn't even name today. <laughs> None of them rank on or are Mount Rushmore. And so, I mean, I'm talking about the period from after Lincoln's assassination to the election of William McKinley in 1900. And yet that was a period of tremendous economic expansion and growth, and we became the world's superpower and industrial leaders. We didn't look to one person. I mean, I think to today there's too much of us saying, yes, but we have to, depends on who's president. Right. No, it doesn't. It depends on the leadership within yourself and Amen. what you're well going said. to do. Well said. And, and, you know, I really think that's the true American spirit. Well, that's, that's a great point, Pam. I mean, too many people are relying on blaming it on others, blaming it on right. government, blaming it on, I see it all the time, but you're so right. You have to take matters into your own hands every single day. It's not about whether it's yeah. President Obama yeah. or Mitt Romney. It's about right. what you do every day to make your life better. Right. You talk about five, the five key principles to effective leadership. Um, summarize us real briefly. I know it's in the book and people can read. What are they? Well, I talk about your inner leadership qualities. I talk about the importance of substance. Substance is extremely important. Not yeah. only knowing your subject matter, but surrounding yourself and having the confidence to surround yourself with a great team. The importance of passion. The, poor, the importance of setting strategic goals and leading people effectively through effective communication. Okay. I mean, living a centered life, how important it is to have your personal and your professional life to be congruent. Yeah. These are components of straightforward leadership and key principles. Uh, and of course, there's a whole lot in between all of that too. Treating every person with respect and treating every person as important. In my talks, I often relay a story about a person who made an impact on my life early on, actually Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, and the way that she treated me when I was in college that left an indelible mark on me because she treated me like I was the most important person in the world when in fact I was just a college student passing through London. And that's a, that's a very important aspect of leadership, is how you treat not only the mayor and the CEO, but how do you treat the janitor and the cleaning person? Because every person in this world is important. Amen. And that is so, the, the, the kind of the foundation for respect yeah. and leadership. Yeah, no, well Isn't said. Well, absolutely is well said. And I didn't know you were such a fan of Margaret Thatcher. Um, I, the Iron Lady. You know, I mean, I, Isn't that a great movie? Oh, oh man. My God. And I got to tell you, uh, Meryl the street. Oh, yeah, she did a great job. Um, I uh, have always been a huge fan of Margaret Thatcher, and I had no idea that you, uh, that, but she's just was a terrific uh, icon for that century. Her and Reagan uh, did incredible things. Um, but lastly, I want to talk to you about here, there seems to be a lack of integrity I'm seeing in business today, or at least y y you get the sense of that if you listen and you, you, you hear it out there. You're a Business Ethics Award recipient, as I recall. What principles do you attribute your success to and, and how do we encourage more people of course to to have those ethics and integrity you know I've always been a little uncomfortable with this topic because I think you are fundamentally uh, brought up a certain way yeah. and you know sometimes when they, they I've been asked well why did this person go wrong in politics or this person go wrong in business I always think to myself well they probably went wrong in elementary school That's right you know I mean something went wrong I mean Maybe they were the kid that cheated at sports. Maybe they were the one looking at someone else's paper. Maybe they were the ones whose you know, mom or dad just didn't provide that kind of structure. But I think that those early years, um, you know, so your parents instill yeah. in you a yeah. set of values and beliefs and do's and don'ts that are ironclad. 
And I think they either instill those in you or they don't. Yeah. And so when you see misbehavior, either in politics or in business, I think the person missed a beat down there in the childhood area. Certainly. Certainly. And, and, and it's hard for them to make it up later in life unless someone intervenes, maybe a religious figure intervenes, or they, you know, they see the light in some way. So lessons for all of us, again, watch, and this is lessons for all your parents out there with your children. I mean, we're, oh, we're, we're shaping them. We're shaping the future shaping generation very you, clearly. Yes. The website is PamIorio.com. That's what it is. Straightforward ways to live and lead. Uh, Two-term mayor of Tampa, again, 87% approval rate an incredible, incredible person and, and human being, I believe, and a terrific leader, uh, has a lot to say on it, and, and also with her new career as a speaker and an author, I wish you so much success. Thank you, Pam. Malcolm. It's a pleasure. I always am so pleased to be with you. And uh, again, the question for you this morning is, are you going to make the leap?